Hello, I want to show you how I created this scene around the fir tree from my tutorial on how to draw trees in colored pencil. The link will be in the description. The tree was on the right side of that paper. I cut the paper in two and I created two colored pencil drawings. The first one was with a couple of horses and now we're going to have a look at this one. As you can see, this is the original paper on which I did the tutorial and now I'm going to be showing you the part of the time lapse where I did the drawing of this fir tree. That was the other tree in my demonstration. And uh, I'm not going to be talking too much about it. I'm going to put the link in the description if you are interested in that tutorial on how to draw trees in colored pencil. I used uh, just a couple of colored pencils to draw this and then I decided to cut the paper in two and create two separate sketches, two separate sc scenes. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, the tree was done and I'm going to be using this right side of the paper and since the tree is going to be more or less in the center of that paper I'm going to have to uh, build my scene around it. I already planned the composition here before I started doing this sketch of the male deer but the thing is that I needed to erase a part of the tree and I really, really recommend against this. <laughs> Don't try this at home. I think that I think that um, color pencils can be a little bit difficult difficult to erase, especially if you've been layering uh, a couple of different pencils on top of one another. So this is not the greatest idea, but it I, it's just something I had to do because of my composition. So a part of the horns will be in front of the tree so once I'm finished sketching this part here you will see that and the horns are quite complex obviously it took a little bit it took a while for me to sketch them out but once I finish sketching this other horn you will see that I will need to erase a little bit of that tree This will be the body of the deer. So I used mostly this soft Kohinoor eraser to try to pick up as much as possible and to clean it up as much as possible. But at one point I also used a little bit of the hard eraser as well, which I also don't recommend because it damages the surface of the paper a little bit. But my idea was to clean up as much as possible and I think I did a good job considering the fact that, like I said, a color pencil as a medium can be a little bit difficult to erase. So now that I've cleaned up um, the place for the horns, my composition is starting to work male deer will be here in the lower right portion of the paper and I'm going to put some more trees to the left. My light source is going to stay the same obviously. It's coming mostly from the left and above. I'm going to be shading the right side with a little bit cooler colors and darker colors and I'm going to be using warmer and lighter colors on the left. I used a couple of different flesh and brown tones for the deer. And now I'm starting to work on the horns. Occasionally um, where I felt that I needed to burnish or blend a little bit more, I used a white colored pencil.
I even used a little bit of ochre there and I'm going to be adding a few touches of orange as well so I used uh, quite a number of colors uh, whatever I felt like at the moment I didn't really have a strict plan but I did plan out my composition I did spend some time thinking about that because I wanted to know where everything will be so the deer is going to be grazing the grass here and like I said the light source will be coming from the left so I'm going to be shading this right side a little bit more and you can see that I also added a little bit of the dark blue I want this area to be a little bit darker and a little bit cooler as well Occasionally I used a little bit of the black color pencil here and there for the, some of the darkest areas but I mostly avoided using black. I mostly used very dark brown and uh, that dark blue. Now comes this long and a little bit tedious part of drawing the grass. As usual uh, the blades of grass need to be more noticeable and larger in the foreground and smaller and more blended in in the background so like I said I am adding a few trees here to the left again starting with this green as my base color and then adding uh, some more texture and uh, shading with other colors mostly a black color pencil to draw some of these uh, darker areas and separate these segments but you can see that I'm adding a touch, touches of warmer green greens as well to make the color of the trees a little bit more interesting. So no need to work too much on the structure of the tree. They look convincing enough, I think. Now I'm adding a few hills here in the back to make the scene more interesting and to create some depth in my drawing. The idea is in front of the trees and the trees are in front of those hills in the back and I'll put some more trees over there as well. But first I need to cover this with my olive green and shade it and do this, this grass. And occasionally I'm using a q-tip to blend a little bit. Now you can see that I added a little bit of orange to the grass uh, for, to get some of the warmer tones. To make it look like this uh, part, this side uh, is sunlit, like the left side of that deer. And I'm going to make the grass under it a little bit darker and add a little bit of dark blue under it to create a shadow. Now I'm adding some more trees in the distance. Uh, here I decided to draw some mountains in the back. The first one to the left uh, has some trees and I also shaded the sky a little bit with a light blue color and created this mass of clouds that I didn't really know what I'm going to do with at the time. I also added some grayish tones to the clouds as well. So like I said, I just created this mass of clouds. I didn't really have an idea what they're really going to look like. Um, but I decided that I needed to make the, these hills or mountains in the back a little bit darker so that they stand out just a little bit more. And then finally I grabbed the blue colored pencil and decided to break up that ma mass of clouds into many smaller wispy clouds. And this is what I came up with. 
and then I had to go over these hills one more time just to make them stand out against the sky a little bit more. So now I removed the tape and I have to cover these areas that remain white but the drawing is largely done. Again another relatively simple nice little scene drawn in colored pencil. You can see how you can find a way to create a nice composition even when you have an element that's already fixed. For me this tree in the middle was already there and I had to build around it so this is what I came up with. You always have to take some time to think about the composition of your drawing and then things will be a lot easier afterwards. Just a few blades of grass here in the foreground and I'm going to spray the drawing with a fixative and then it will be pretty much done. Right. Here the drawing was sprayed with a fixative and the only thing left to do is to sign it. Like the last time I'm gonna put a very small signature here to the left, the bottom of the drawing. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one as well and thank you for watching.